Well, the Irish have been present in Liverpool for, for centuries, but of course the real growth came when Liverpool really established itself as the great main port on the west coast of, of Britain. And then sort of the Irish Sea became Liverpool's private Celtic empire, so we had all sorts of merchants, people engaged in a whole variety of trades, professions and so on, so that we had a well-established thing here. People don't realise there were at least 50,000 Irish born in Liverpool before the famine of the 1840s. I mean, Liverpool has always been this tremendous great melting pot, but the main ingredient in that melting pot has always been the Irish and the Celtic presence. So although people will tell you that to think of Liverpool as Scouse, you have to think about Scandinavian sailors' dishes and, you know, it comes from lobscouse. I mean, Scouse is surely Irish stew by any other name. So it's really the Irish thing which has made Liverpool such a wonderfully different type of place. You know, it's, it's in England but not of England. It faces out to the sea. So it's looking across that private Celtic empire which is that inland Irish sea which, which Liverpool has come to dominate. You notice it obviously very, very definitely within, within the way that, that Liverpudlians or Scousers, as we now call them, them, speak. It's true, I think, in the way the type of humour they have. It gives a tremendous amount to the fact that we've got this great musical heritage here and so on. So that I think across the whole strands of things, you can see that Irish presence as being very, very prominent. And I think it explains why... Actually, Liverpool, one, one hates to say this, but Liverpool is really rather good in times of adversity. And I think it's that Irish character which helps Liverpool stand out against adversities, to stand out against misrepresentation, to stand out against misperception. Because they were all, that type of stigma, that type of prejudice, which the Irish encountered when they first came to Liverpool. But as the whole city itself went into decline in the 20th century, I think people tended to identify with those, the poor Paddy and the poor Bridget, who had suffered so much in the 19th century. So that the, the low Irish, as they became to be called, really became sort of the prototype of the Scouser. So I, mean, I think you know, the Irish presence really explains the very essence of what Liverpool is about. I've often heard people say that um, you're not a proper scouser if you don't have some kind of Irish blood in you. Um, would, is that, would that be a theory that you uh, concur with? <laughs> Uh, that's, that's, that's a very difficult, very controversial one, because, I mean, having been here 30 years, and obviously from my accent coming from the South, um, I, you know, I aspire to honorary Scouse status, but I know I shall never probably get it. Um, I, oh, it's, 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 that, that, is, that is a very, very, very hard one. And, I mean, I, I like the fact that, I mean, you know, there is, there's still a diversity in Liverpool, that even if, even if it is immediately recognisable as as a dialect, an accent, a culture and so on. It's not homogenous, no. I mean, Liverpool has got all sorts of diversity within it. Uh, I mean, and, and a wonderful diversity in the sense that you don't have to be of a particular type to support one or other of the football teams, for example, which is marvellous about Liverpool, which wouldn't apply elsewhere, where it would be a straightforward sectarian affiliation. doesn't apply here. So you can have all those sorts of differences, but I still say the main ingredient in what makes a Liverpudlian a Liverpudlian is that, that Celticism. It's essentially Irish, but let's not forget the Welsh, let's not forget the Scots, let's not forget the Manx. Why do you think it is that the sectarian element that, by all accounts, just some generations ago, was quite strongly felt about Liverpool, has virtually dissipated now, whereas in other parts of the country, for example, Glasgow and Northern yeah. Ireland, it is still very strongly prevalent? I think that's, that's, that's a very good question, which no one really has got, got the answer to. I to a certain extent, I, I, I put it down to the sort of roller coaster history ride that, that Liverpool has had. That when Liverpool, you know, was a flourishing great world port and so on, then you needed your sort of sectarian things to make sure you get your best possible place within the labour market. But when the whole economy turned down and so on, you realised there was a sort of commonality of suffering. And so some of the distinctions, some of the efforts to try to get some type of marginal privilege seems insignificant. And so really that, that sectarian thing went. And other factors account for it as well. I mean, major changes in the residential pattern and so on that whereas life used to revolve around, you know, the pub, the parish and so on there was an immediate geographical thing which strengthened your ethno-confessional or sectarian allegiance. That sort of disappeared when tens of thousands of people were, were decanted out to outer estates which didn't have that type of infrastructure based on particular confessional allegiance. But I, I, I still know it's, 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 you know it's a fascinating thing that, that, that it has because I mean, quite clearly it has now, and there's sort of, if you like, there's a, a tribal allegiance to Liverpool as city rather than to your particular sect. 
And finally, why do you suppose that St. Patrick's Day is so popular within Liverpool amongst the Irish uh, population and, and the non-Irish population? Well, I think actually one good thing about St. Patrick's Day is it's jolly good timing, you know, that you can begin to think, oh, long last, that dreaded winter is, is, is over. And even if there are those people of a particular religious dispens uh, dispensation who actually think, oh, no, look, we're in this stage of Lent, well, there's one day during Lent you can also let your hair down, and that's, that's St. Patrick's Day. And it's also the one time that we can all pretend that we're something which we're not. That, you know, even I can actually think perhaps I'm Irish for the day, and that's really a rather nice thing to do.